This is the seventh episode of Spiceworks Live. Today, improved scanning in Spiceworks 6. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Spiceworks Live. My name is Elise. I am in marketing here at Spiceworks. If you're tuning in for the first time, this is a weekly series that we've been doing during the beta release of Spiceworks 6, which is the latest product release here. And we've been covering different topics every week to kind of give you guys a little bit of an insight into what's in the beta, what's available to test. Today, we're going to be talking about <coughs> improved scanning capabilities in Spiceworks 6. And we're going to be doing that with Doug Brown and Ezra Pagel. It's going to be really good. So get your questions in. If you have any questions on scanning or on Spiceworks 6 in general, you can use the live chat window on the live stream page, or you can also send them in via Twitter. We've got a couple of guys behind us who are going to be making sure those questions get to us. Be sure to use um, hashtag Spiceworks 6, though, so they can um, catch them. And at the end of the broadcast, we're going to be giving away a Spiceworks 6 t-shirt, which is very cool. Um, and you will be getting on the list to receive these as soon as they are printed up, which will be toward the end of the beta. So I think that's it for me. Let's go right into the questions with Doug Brown and Ezra Pagel. Over to you guys. Uh, so, this oh. always happens. <laughs> Sorry. All right, as Elise said, my name is uh, Doug Brown. You may have recognized I'm not Chris Bushover. He's a little bit taller and slightly more attractive. He's also our IT guy, and he's putting out some fires this morning, so uh, they pulled me up from JV. Um, I'm a UX designer here at Spiceworks, so it means I have the pleasure of working with some developers like Ezra, who we have with us this morning. So uh, Ezra, tell us, when did you determine that you wanted to be a software developer? Was it early boyhood, or? Uh, probably fairly late in my academic career. I was about one course away from getting my English degree, and I decided I wanted to make a little bit more money than that. So I switched majors, and that's all she wrote. Well, it seems like you're doing well with English. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sweet. Very. Thank you, thank you. Another fun fact about Ezra, he's got surprisingly cold hands. So, and fast thumbs. But very fast thumbs. <laughs> OK, so uh, Ezra, a big part of 6.0 is improved scanning. Right. So tell us a little bit about um, you know, what scanning improvements have we made? What can users expect to see? So we've started on this roadmap of trying to improve the scanning process and both performance and detecting unknowns and eventually a workflow to try to, to mitigate some of the unknown discovery. And the first phase of that, which is going to go into 6.0, is integration with uh, InMap, which is an open source network scanning utility. I'm sure a lot of our IT pros already know what it is. For those who don't, it's a, um, a scanning utility that detects hosts and devices on a network and tells you uh, the services that are running, OS version, things like that. So it's an open source project that we've approached the author of, licensed for redistribution, and we're now bundling it in Spiceworks 6. We are um, replacing some of the initial uh, network discovery phase of our product with that. So when we go out and you give us an IP range and we scan your network, now we'll hook into InMap and it will perform that network discovery. It's much faster. Um, it, you know, the slash 24 is roughly 20 seconds in a wired connection. So that's a big performance improvement. I think the user is going to be able to appreciate that. We're also um, replacing what we call the up-down check. So periodically, we like to tell our users if the, the devices they have in inventory are responsive or not. And previously, we've taken the set of known devices, walked that set, and pinged the IPs associated with those, which works well unless you're in a dynamically addressed environment, in which case those devices might change their IP identity. So with InMap now, what we can do is we can scan the entire network every time we're trying to figure out device responsiveness and report back if a device has changed IP. So people who use DHCP are really going to appreciate that feature. Um, yeah, so basically it's a big performance win to get InMap in there. It's a foot in the door for future development. It's fast. It's a, a product that's, you know, has 15 years of development specifically optimized around network scanning, you know, uh, bandwidth latency, it'll work around. So for us, we feel like it's a great integration. Cool. So no small feat, you know, improving a scan that's existed for a while. Um, yeah. You know, if you had to pinpoint one or two things that you felt like was, you know, just the coolest thing about working on this project, what do you think that it would be? So for me, professionally, it's been really great to deep dive into kind of the core, I wouldn't say the core IP, but something that's so fundamental to the product and really, you know, get myself involved in that aspect of it and see, you know, five plus years worth of development around you know, arcane device detection, it's pretty amazing to see the breadth of the product. So that's been a really rewarding thing. And as always, anytime I interact with the users on the forum, it's been really great to get good, positive feedback, 
um, fast. You know, you can you can vet ideas quickly, and people will tell you what stuff's broken. And it's hard for us, obviously, to replicate every permutation of everybody's network environment in our test lab. So it's rewarding to have people who've come out and said, you know, here's my environment, here's what it looks like for me, um, kicking the tires, mm -hmm. and uh, get feedback. I think that's a really cool part of it. Very cool. So what's the very latest on the uh, in-map integration with uh, this latest release? So in the last build, we put in the um, initial up-down checking. So that went into beta 3. And in beta 4, we're going to have the DHCP detection. So the, the device IP changing logic is mm -hmm. now in that. So download that, play with it, let us know how it works out for you. Um, we're getting pretty close to release candidate here, so we'd like to start. We're pretty much feature complete now. We really want to get everybody on that. You know, give it some mileage and see what you can break. Yeah, absolutely. Which is, you know, an ideal time to kind of plug. If you're not beta testing, you're watching this, um, absolutely get in there. Um, can't tell you how valuable that is for us to get the feedback that we need to really develop the product that you want. As Ezra said, we're in those forums. Um, we're getting your feedback and that stuff that we're um, that we're including. So, so I actually just scraped the bug list this morning and pulled some bugs that, you know, just as examples of stuff users found. Um, I've got. Vasile Ignatov found um, some invalid by UTF-8 stuff, which for all of our international users, that was a huge catch. Um, Tim7139 found uh, complex scans of multiple ranges are failing. Again, great bug catch. And Bernard W, who's hugely active and been extremely helpful, found a uh, inventory wizard defaulting to localhost. And so this kind of stuff has been really great to, to get caught early because it's going to get found inevitably in some environment. So appreciate those. There's a ton more examples like that. I just happened to, to pull those up. So keep up the good work, beta testers. Awesome. Okay, we're going to kick things back over to Elise and uh, have a look at your questions. So we'll be back on with those in just a bit. Thanks, guys. And I was just going to add to that, on top of the inherent rewards that you will feel um, with beta testing and helping us um, make sure the product is really good, there's also all kinds of fun stuff that come from being a beta tester. Um, Ezra mentioned Tim7139 and Bernard W. were both beta testers of the week and were sort of spotlighted in the community for their contributions to the beta testing. And um, if you find a bug in the beta, you also get a cool new beta bug badge, which I will go in and give you the week following, um, usually. If I don't, then be sure to send me a note. But usually I'm pretty good about going in and giving everybody um, beta bug badges. So <laughs> another fun way to get involved, and so don't forget to do that. Um, what was I talking about? <laughs> <laughs> kind of forgot. Um, <laughs> don't forget to send your questions in um, using the chat window or, or Twitter. You can um, send them in using hashtag SpiceWorks6 and get some questions in on Nmap or on anything else for these guys to answer. Put them on the hot seat a little bit. And um, at the end, we'll be giving away a SpiceWorks6 t-shirt. So you get your questions in. And I think that's it for me. <laughs> Are we ready for questions? Do we have some? Let's do it. All right. All right. I yeah, can actually answer them. Do you have one already? Uh, I've got one ready. Okay. Um, so, any new? Uh, is there anything new with the UI, the user interface, um, coming out with the scan stuff and the eye candy? No. So all this is behind the scenes. The users shouldn't expect to see anything visibly different. It's functionally equivalent. Um, it's performance improvements, but there's nothing surface in the UI that you're going to see relevant to MMAP. Okay. Um, all right, next question. Will we be able to specify all the in-map command line arguments we know and love for scans? Um, so we, we're definitely going to allow you to customize the in-map scans. Um, yeah, so there's advanced settings you're going to be able to, if you have existing in-map flags people are using or they've got something in their environment that they know, and people who are power users of in-map likely have this. We're definitely going to support um, you using your own flags, although uh, don't apply for a refund if it breaks <laughs> using your own flags. Great, great. Keep those questions rolling in. Um, scans are kicking off. Apologize, I'm learning to read a little handwriting here. Um, oh, okay. They're kicking off alarms on my network monitoring appliance mm -hmm. firewall. Uh, why didn't this happen before, and what do you do about it? So we've seen some users report this back on the forums, and. Uh, it's likely it's a throttling issue or there's some kind of um, firewall rule in place to limit a number of simultaneous open connections or something like that. But I would say those are the kind of things we're trying to catch in beta um, and try to knock them out now so we can 
either allow alternate flags, you know, I just talked about customized in-map flags. If, if that's going to be a problem, we can throttle it down. In-map supports how aggressive uh, you want to be on your scanning. So. Cool. So um, has any, uh, have there been any non-Active Directory scanning improvements? <laughs> or non, just says AD, I'm assuming that's Active Directory. No, so that works just like it does today. So if you're doing um, OU specific scans, if you want to do a WAD colon scan, that will work just like it does today. Okay. All right, another question here. Um, in map six uh, came out this week. Didn't know that. It did, yes. How about that? So uh, are we using that? So as of now, we're not, and it's unlikely. We're doing some performance testing right now, and unless we find something markedly improved, um, we're not going to switch. Just pretty late in the game for us to do that, and we've got plenty of time. You know, future releases, if we want to integrate that, we can. Yeah. If there's something that's a massive performance difference, then we'll make a, a fast switch if we feel like it's stable enough. I'm sure after three years of development, it is. But for us, like all of the regression testing involved is going to be a pain. So I think we're going to stick with five five for now. Okay. Um, so will the in-map scans use ping scan or full port scan by default? So um, actually, it's. Not to nerd out here, but if it's on land, it'll use layer two um, ARP scans, and if it's um, off land, it will try a variety of protocols, ICMP um, being one of those. So we supply a specific set of ports that we're going to scan, um, and they're the services we're looking for, and there are alternate flags if you want to do something beside, above and beyond the services we look for. So yes, ICMP, but others. Okay, uh, so will scanning be a user scan as well? Uh, that uh, yeah, will scanning be a user scan as well that can return the logged on user to that PC? No, the scan not from InMap. I mean, we'll be able to return that data. So we're using InMap just to do the initial device identification. We're still using all the proprietary uh, SpiceWorks logic to deep dive into the device, and we'll tell you who's in. But we're not going to get that off the InMap scan. Okay. All right. We're waiting for more questions. If you have any deep personal questions for Ezra, I think he's taking those today as well. Okay. Preferably offline. <laughs> we'll send you his personal email. I'll that. need a drink of that orange liqueur. That yeah, where did... I guess it's Wednesday. Oh, here we go. So, will InMap work together with remote collectors and or the new remote agents to make our lives awesome? So in-map coexists just fine with remote collectors, remote agents. Specifically, the remote agents, it won't. It does the exact same thing as a finder scan that happens upon a remote agent that's on the network. If you've got a remote agent there, it'll pick it up. It'll defer to the remote agent's um, data. And it works with the remote collectors transparently, so it looks just like it does today. OK. Lives awesome. You're improving lives with the new in-map feature. I bet you didn't know that. Faster, better, stronger, maybe. Awesome, fantastic. So, did you um, letter in thumb wrestling in high school, or no? I was just speaking of JV. I was I was okay. benched a lot on on thumb wrestling. Yeah, you have very large thumbs. I was thinking you got me beat. No, no, it's definitely rule of thumb. I think you're. Uh, uh oh, more. oh, here we go. One more stalling. Will in map discoveries integrate into inventory tools in SpiceWorks? Yes, that's. Uh, Inventory tools. So that's how we pull the inventory. Yeah, most definitely. We're, we're, that's how we're going to populate. We're deciding what devices to populate in inventory. Yes. Okay. <coughs> and um, t shirt? Oh, hold on. Here we go. More. You guys have to type faster. What about systems with multiple NICs? So if if it's a uh, if it's the SpiceWorks core server, the SpiceWorks app server that has multiple NICs, it will scan those just as it does today, multiple network ranges. Um, it will detect and use the same logic we do today. It will correlate whatever the um, the networks that it has it finds those devices on. We don't report we don't we won't report multiple devices back. We'll just report coalesce those into the same device. So if it has multiple NICs, we'll report multiple IP identities for a single device. Okay. Good question though. Uno mas. Oh, we got one more. This is our final question for today. Duplicating MAC addresses, uh, devices with Wi-Fi and wired MAC addresses, 
How do you prevent duplicate, uh, duplicate discovery? So read that to me one more time, duplicate MAC addresses. So unless you're in a virtual environment, that's like such an edge case that MACs should be unique. Um, you, we have the same, the prior question kind of hit the same um, topic, which is what happens if you have multiple uh, NIC identities on that and we'll just have to correlate them back to the same device. So we have plenty of devices that have both wired and wireless connections and we know how to, to correctly populate that data, but it's pretty straightforward. All now, right. if there's something, something's got multiple, you know, dupe max, it's a different story. Cool. Okay, we've been talking with Ezra. Um, thanks for your time, Ezra. Obviously, working hard on getting that stand, uh, scan stuff improved in N260. So now I think I'm going to kick things back over to Elise. And she's got some exciting thanks, news. Thanks, guys. I do. Let's make sure to get these in there, too. Oh, we've okay, got questions. Everybody can have a shot at this awesome T-shirt. I don't know if that one has a name, so... All right, and I'm going to have Doug do the honors. Okay. Shuffle them up in there a little bit. Some of these are very small. Okay, and the question on will we be able to specify all the inmap command line arguments we know and love for scans, which looks like it was Sartan X who gave us that question, so he's our big winner for today. Excellent. Ooh, Sartan X. Yeah. Thanks, everyone, Sartan. for sending your questions in. And Sartan X, if you're out there still listening, which I'm sure you are, um, send me your mailing address, and I will get you on the list for the T-shirt. You can send it to me via email at Elise, E-L-I-S-E, at Spiceworks, or PM me in the community. Um, but congratulations to everyone. Um, thanks for sending your questions in. Hope you guys got a lot out of it. Don't forget to get in there and beta test. Hit Check us up on the forums. The yeah. Do what? Hit forums. us up on the forums if there's any yeah. more questions. Get your questions in on the in the on the forums in the Spicework Six group, which you should be following. I'm sure you all are. And um, and 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 oh, and um, yeah, you can also find recordings. We've done six prior episodes where we've covered a lot of different topics and features in Spicework Six, so you can find those in the Spicework Six group as well. So be sure to chime in and let us know how you liked. Spiceworks Live, if there's anything you'd like to see covered going forward, and what you thought. So thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you all next week, uh, same time, Wednesday at 11 Central Time. And thanks for tuning in. Thanks, guys. See you later. <laughs>